Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting video on C Sharp Collection series. This video is all about the best practices while working with collections. I'll tell you seven best practices. In my previous videos, I have discussed these in bits and pieces. However, I have consolidated them all here and also added few more. Please note that these are guidelines and no hard and fast rules. Of course, there might be a situation where this does not fit. However, most often following these best practices will make your code robust and maintainable. So let's get started. So our first best practice is do use the least specialized type possible while passing collection as a parameter of a method. So what do you understood by this? It means consider using the most generalized type possible as a collection parameter. Now, what are these generalized collections? Yes, that's the collection interfaces. So to summarize this, we should consider using an interface instead of a concrete type like list when passing collections to methods. It makes our code more generalized. Let me explain this using a sample code. So here I have a data access class. It has two methods, get product list, which returns list of product and another method get product array, which returns array of product. In my calling class, I have a method called so product. It receives a concrete list of products, created one more list to hold currently available product loops through all the products and display them. And if the product is available, then adds it to the available product list. That's it. It's a pretty simple code. Now this code takes list of T, which means it can take only concrete list of product. Let me get the product list and pass it to this method. So let me instantiate our data access class data access dot get product list. Let's call show product and pass our list of product. Perfect. No compile time error. Now, how about passing array of product? What do you think? Will it work? Let's do that. Let's get our product array data access dot get product array. Let me call show product with array of product. So looks like our show product method is not generalized enough to take an array of product. You can see we have an error here. It says cannot convert product array to list of product. That's the reason it is a good idea to consider an interface when it comes to method parameter so that your method is generalized enough to take different types. Let's update our show product method parameter to iList. See, immediately our method is compatible to array as well. That's because array and list both implements iList. Now our method is more generalized. We can use it for any type of collection that implements iList. Okay, now let's say our products are stored as a dictionary values. Now, is our show product method is generalized enough to take dictionary values? What do you think? Let's see that. Let me create a dictionary var product dictionary equal to new dictionary key as int and value as product. Let me add couple of products to this dictionary. Now let's pass the value of this dictionary to our show product method. Remember value is just a product. So again, our show product method is not generalized enough to take the values of a dictionary. Let's see the type of this value collection. So that's value collection. Let's see what this collection implements. Hmm. It seems it does not implement iList. 
That's the reason our show product method does not accept this. But the good news is it implements eye collection. Let's change our input type to eye collection. Super! Now it works for array, eye list and dictionary values too. So I hope you realized how writing a generalized collection as parameter to a method helps. However, it depends on your requirement, what level of generalization you want to provide. Let's move to our second best practice. Use an interface when returning a collection from a method. As we have seen, we can make our code more generalized by passing collection interfaces rather than concrete collections. Similarly, it is a best practice to return an interface from a method instead of a concrete collections. Now, if you see our data access class, we have two methods. One returns a list and another returns an array. Perhaps there may be two types of consumer where one needs an array and another list. You know what? Let's create one more method at our consumer end which receives a product array. Let me copy this method and change the parameter to product array and also the method name to so product array. Let's call this method and pass in our product array. All good. But if you see our data access class, both this method actually returns the same data, right? Now again, can we write a generalized method here? Yes, we know we can write. We can either return an i collection or i list as well. Let me return i list and delete get product method. Let's go back to our client code. So we see an error here, which says cannot convert i list to product array. So what can we do? We can convert our i list to an array. That's it. So the summary is that when you return a collection from a method, then consider returning generalized collection interface because it gives you flexibility to return more types in case in future your internal implementation changes. When we say internal implementation, it means say tomorrow you want to return your own custom collection that implements iList. You can do that safely because your client will not be impacted. Now let's see our third best practice. Do not use weakly typed collections in public APIs. The statement is self-explanatory. It basically indicates that you should strongly type the items stored in your collection. That is, if you have a list of string values, do not declare the collection items as object, like list of object. Now this list can basically hold any data type, which is not a good practice. If it is supposed to store a string, then do declare it as list of proper data type. That's list of a string or list of int or list of a particular class but not as list of object. Let's move to our best practice number four. Consider not exposing settable collection properties. It means the consumer of your collection should not be able to set a completely new collection to your collections. However, I mentioned earlier, it all depends on how you want your user to use your collection, but give it a thought on this whenever you expose a collection. Now, if you expose a settable collection, something like this, then you are basically allowing the user to completely replace the contents of this collection if required by clearing the collection first and then adding the new contents. Most often when we expose a collection, we don't want this to happen, right? Now, as I mentioned, it depends on your requirement. If user will only be reading data maintained by object, then you can expose a read-only collection, something like this. If the user will just add or remove items from the collection, then just simple get-only collection property is best. Again, something like this. See, it doesn't have set. Let's move to our best practice number five. 
do not return null values from collection properties or methods returning collections. Yes, returning null instead of a collection from a method or a property is extremely bad practice. Let me show you an example. Look at this method, get product. It calls the private method get product from DB. And if the count is zero, then returns a null, else returns the product. Now with this code, the caller of the method has to be cautious enough to check for null. Let's call this method and see what happens. Let me debug this. So count equal to zero and it returns null. And now it tries to loop through the returned items. But in this case, it is null. And hence, boom, it throws an exception. So to fix this, the caller has to consciously put a check. Something like this. Now the question is, can we avoid this? Yes, of course. The guideline says, instead of returning a null, return an empty list. Something like this. Now let's remove this null check and debug. See, now caller does not need to bother about checking null. So the bottom line is, do not return a null from a method that returns a collection. Instead, if required, returns an empty collection. Let's move to our best practice number 6. Do prefer collections over arrays. Collections provide more control over contents, it can evolve over time and are more usable. But again, if you are developing low-level APIs, it might be better to use arrays for read-write scenarios. Arrays have a smaller memory footprint which helps reduce the working set. And access to elements in an array is faster because it is optimized by runtime. But these are very specific scenarios most often benefit of collections over shadows arrays. Now let's see our final best practice. Consider using I enumerable of T as return type if you want your collection to be immutable. That's if you do not want your collection to be changed by the caller. As we know, a mutable collection can be updated or extended in place. This means you can change, add or remove elements of a collection. Most of the time, this is not expected. Let me explain this using an example. Let's change this code a bit. Let's get a private class level variable. If it is equal to null, then add the items to the list. Now, here we are retrieving the product. Let me add one more product locally. So, this is basically a local change, right? Let me call our get product method again. Let's debug and see. So, we have three products here. We are adding one more. So, now we have four. Now, we are freshly calling our get product list again. What do you think? How many products will be there? Looking at the code, we have just made the local changes. It should have three, right? But guess what? It has four. It means the changes that we have made locally has impacted our main collection. That's because we are returning I collection. And it has method add which allows to add. And hence, it is not immutable. It means anyone can change it. We have just seen this, right? Now let's make the return type as I enumerable. Now see, we get a compile time error, which means we cannot add anything to this list, thereby makes our return type immutable. If the caller still wants to add something to it, then they have to cast it to list or other collection, but again, that will not impact our main collection. That's all for this video. I hope few of these best practices would help you to use collections optimally. 
If you like the video, then consider subscribing the channel and drop in your comments for all the future videos on C-Sharp and other technologies. Thanks.